Inspiring interviews with today's top landlords. This is the Rental Income Podcast. And now, Dan Lane. Every year at the end of the year, I like to look back and reflect on some of my favorite moments from the past year. And 2022 was a great year. We had some incredible guests sharing lots of great information. So on the podcast today, we're going to look back and listen to five of my favorite clips. And this wasn't easy. There there was so much to pick from this year, but I, I picked out five things that really resonated with me, five things that really stood out. So we're going to look at probably one of my favorite financing strategies that we've talked about this year. We'll listen in on a couple of stories of people that have reached financial freedom from their rental income, and we'll take a look at the numbers. I, I really appreciate everyone that shared their numbers with us this year. And we'll look back at some of the numbers. So let's take a really quick break. We'll thank our sponsors. We'll come right back and we'll listen in on our first clip. It's a lot of work to find a really good rental property. And when you actually find that property, you want to make sure you're working with a lender that can get that loan closed. The lender that I recommend is Chaley Ridge from Ridge Lending Group. She's a nationwide lender and her specialty is helping investors finance rental properties. She has a ton of loan programs, and she can find something customized to you for your situation. If you want to find out more or you're ready to get started today, just go to RidgeLendingGroup.com. That's R-I-D-G-E LendingGroup.com, NMLS 42056. Rental Income Podcast. Our first clip today comes from Adrian Panzo. Adrian talked about how, as a police officer, he started buying rental properties in his free time and eventually was able to leave the police force and support himself off of his rental income. And I was a police officer for 21 years. Long story short, I decided my my plan was I'll free up the equity in my home through through the means of a home equity line of credit and use that money to start buying rental properties to ultimately, ultimately, live life on my terms because I knew and I felt and I knew through through so many people that I had spoken to in the research that I did, real estate investing could give me that financial freedom, could give me that freedom living life on my terms. So that's basically in a nutshell, 21 years as a police officer, the light bulb went off pretty much towards the end of my career and start building generational wealth and, and, and wealth by using that engine, but it all started with a home equity line of credit. We didn't have any money in the bank. How many rentals did you end up needing to be able to leave? I think by the time we left, it was give or take right around 10 10 to 12, let's just say. Um, Again, going back years ago. Um, But yeah, 10 to 12 properties. is, is what we were, okay, we were looking at. Okay, 10 to at. 12. And you own a lot of like fourplexes and duplexes and threeplexes. How many actual rental units was that? Give or take about 40. 40, okay. So ten, about 10 buildings, about 40, 40 units. Yeah, and, four per building, give or take. But we'll round it off. Could be a, you know, a couple more, a couple less. But let's just say, yeah, 40. Okay, and how long did that take you from the time that you bought your first property till you got to your 40th? I want to say, I want to say my 40th unit, um, six years. Okay. So you were buying, you know, maybe like one or two properties a year and just letting things build up. Is that how it played out that you were buying one or two a year or did you go go through spurts where you would buy more properties and then maybe years when you didn't buy anything? Um, Yeah, I I would say when we started one a year, but then we got into, um, uh, we got into joint venture partnerships, working with like-minded investors and utilizing the buy, renovate, refinance and rent strategy. So based on that, um, you know, we, we really accelerated our portfolio, you know, the power of the Burr strategy and joint venture partnerships took us from 10 properties to over 65 properties we own now. Um, But to answer your question, it took us 
just the better part of five, six years to okay. reach that 40 units. That was Adrian Panto from episode number 354. And if you want to go back and listen to the full interview for any of the shows that we covered today, I've got links to everything on the website. You can find it at rentalincomepodcast.com slash episode 399. Up next is Dakota Worrell. Dakota has a great story. Seven years ago, he was delivering pizza and he knew absolutely nothing about real estate. It was a cool job. I made $2.13 an hour plus tips. Um, and, you know, in 2015, I started transitioning out of that. And I, I bought my first rental property uh, and kind of haven't looked back since. <laughs> Getting into real estate was probably the, the best decision I've, yeah. I've ever made in my professional career. Now, right now, you are in the process of selling your portfolio and, and cashing out. And you've seen a ton of appreciation. How much money are you going to make selling off all your rentals? So when I started this journey, I, you know, got a grant for being poor, essentially. Um, and I started this, I started this career with $419 and essentially lived off my cash flow. Mm -hmm. And I turned that four hundred nineteen dollars and all the cash for that produced into I think when I sell this we're going to net five million dollars. Wow! And, and over seven years, you went from four four hundred nineteen dollars to millions of dollars. That is and absolutely, literally just recycling that same money. That is absolutely well, incredible. This was my only job. It was my only source of income this entire time, right? Which means every dollar that I ever had to reinvest in another property it, it came from that same money. Right. And, I, and I think that's the part that people don't value enough is I, I didn't bring any extra money in on, right. on this journey. It was all cash out refinance, 1031 exchanges, trading up. You know, so four hundred and nineteen dollars turned into one way or another five million over the course of seven years. And I just don't know any other industry that you can really do that in. If you want to get some more details and learn how Dakota did it, we cover it on episode number three sixty nine. Up next is Brandon Nice. Brandon had a job that he wasn't that crazy about. And he thought that if he bought some rental properties, the rental income could give him the freedom that he was looking for. So, Brandon, what was going on? Why were you not too happy with your job? I was in a, a heavy, stressful, uh, fast-paced job. Like many Americans, felt like I was overworked and undervalued. And it was really impacting the quality of life. Uh, unfortunately, my job would come home with me on nights and weekends. And... It was just really impacting my overall happiness. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's, that's understandable. I think a lot of people are in that, that same situation. So what, what gave you the idea that you could buy rental properties and your, your rental income could pay to support your lifestyle? Sure. So for me, it was twofold. First, I kind of looked at my own life and I had been a renter for 11 or 12 years and I was the type of tenant that would have rent on time, in full, no problems, no headaches, no maintenance calls. And I thought to myself, if I could have five or 10 tenants like me, um, it could create cash flow and possibly be a business. And then I also read a book, a really basic fundamental book on investing in duplexes, triplexes, and quadplexes. And it really just laid out in black and white, um, generating a net profit margin from rents minus your, you know, monthly expenses. And it worked. I mean, so today you live exclusively on your rental income and you don't have a huge portfolio, right? I don't. Yeah. I have 20 doors and thankfully, I mean, I'm thankful every day I've been financially free for two and a half years. That is so awesome. So how long did it take you from the time that you said, okay, I'm going to do this until you had enough income to leave your job? Under five years. Five years. Okay, so walk me through how that worked. Sure. So my first purchase, which served as a primary residence, was a duplex. And I was house hacking before I even knew house hacking was a term. And really my thought process behind that was, one, I want my mortgage to be as affordable 
or as minimal as possible with revenue coming in from a second unit. And then I also thought long term that down the road, this will serve as a two door rental once I'm not living in one of the units. Mm -hmm. Probably the biggest thing that stood out to me this year was how relatively quickly people were able to reach financial freedom through rental properties. It seems like a lot of people were able to do it in between five to seven years, which really isn't that long. And if you want to hear more about how Brandon did it, we go over his story and walk through how he built his portfolio on episode number 371. Probably one of my favorite financing strategies that we talked about this year comes from Pat Grace. Pat was with us just a few weeks ago, and Pat shared how he used a line of credit to build out his rental portfolio. We started doing a lot of line of credit financing um, in the last seven years, which has really changed or kind of taken me and, you know, me and my wife and my family and our personal investments to, you know, the next level. So I just love that strategy because I pay off my properties in like seven to 10 years, uh, packages of them. And so there's a big difference between compound amortized loans and simple interest loans. And so compound amortized is great, you know, when we get it right on our 401ks and our IRAs, we get compound interest paid to us. It's the worst when you have to pay it and your mortgage is compound interest. So you're paying a lot of interest on interest. It's heavy up front, um, and it, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of extra money going out the door. Where if you just have simple interest, and you have a line of credit that is a two way vehicle, your mortgage is one way. You only can put money in, so you're not going to take your cash flow, and you're not going to take the sale proceeds from a property and apply it to your mortgage, where you could take all your cash flow and all your sale proceeds from a property and apply it to your line of credit because you have access to it if you need it. It's not gone. And so we figured out, you know, just financing simple interest and in kind of eliminating our checking account. So like all the money our companies make, all the money we make gets put into some sort of line of credit. And that line of credit is might be holding a little bit of real estate debt and that's how we pay off ourselves. So all of our cash flow, all of the money we make, all of the money I make selling property, we, we throw that all into a line of credit, which is basically our checking account. And we pay bills out of the line. Um, you know, we, we buy properties out of the line. So this is just a simple way to pay off properties really fast uh, by using the existing cash flow that you have. That's an interesting Interesting strategy, and I, I want to make sure I, I understand this. So you, you have a line of credit, and you'll use that line of credit to buy a property. And then all the cash flow that comes in from all of your properties, money you might make selling a house, whatever other money you have, you're paying down that line of credit, and then that's reducing your interest cost on a right. monthly basis. Yeah. And then that money is available again. So if you find another deal, you can you can draw on that money and use it again right away. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's exactly um, correct on, you know, kind of what we're doing. So say I got 10 properties um, free and clear. I take them to a bank. I instead of getting a, you know, a regular refinance on a on a amortized loan, I just ask them for 75 percent line of credit. And then, you know, so say they give me on 10 properties, they give me a million dollars on the line. And um, I uh, I can draw just like a credit card. I can buy more property. I can do whatever I want. I can pay off my old. I, usually what I do is I take the, the money and I pay off my other line of credit, what, whatever I took it from. Mm -hmm. And so now I owe a million dollars. Your debt service on a million dollars is about five grand. Well, if I got 10 homes bringing in 1500 a month, I can sweep all that money into that line of credit every month and and almost pay double to the uh, to the mortgage or to the line of credit. And so you would never do that with a mortgage. Take all your income because you can't get it back. Right. With a, it, you can. And so simple interest is a lot more powerful vehicle uh, than than compound interest when you're when you're paying it. So you ever stop to think. 
man, I got this $100,000 Escalade. How do I pay this thing off in five years, but I can't pay off 100000 to my mortgage in five years? It's because they're different debt vehicles. Right. You use interest versus compound interest. So if I pay $100,000 to my line of credit with a sale, say I sell a property and I, uh, I have some rents and I, I, I pay 100000 to my line. My next month's payment is based off of 900000 not a million dollars. Right. And so your actual monthly payment goes down every month as you make these big payments in and you're paying your properties down really fast. The biggest thing I would say to do for people is try it with like 10 grand. There's so many people listening right now that have a $50,000 line of credit, $100,000 line of credit, and they don't know what to do with it. Take 10 grand from that line and pay down your mortgage with it, okay? With that move, you probably just took three to four years, maybe five, off of your mortgage, okay? Now, you pay your mortgage, you pay your line, all around, you, you gotta have cash flow. You cannot do this scenario if you're negative cash flow in life. You know, you gotta have positive. So instead of you, if you have a 1000 to $2,000 left over every month, and you're putting it in your checking account. What if you just put that toward the line of credit? Ten grand, you'll have it paid off in, you know, five months. And so you 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 take your cash flow, you pay back your line of credit. If you've got two thousand dollars a month extra after you pay all your bills, say you have a thousand dollars a month extra after you pay all your bills, you have a ten thousand dollar line, you pay that off in ten months, but you just took three to four years off your mortgage. It's almost like magic. And if you want to learn more about how Pat has used this strategy to build out his rental portfolio that is actually almost paid off and generates millions of dollars a year in rental income, you can check him out on episode number three ninety six. We had a lot of guests on the show this year that were very open and honest and more than happy to share their numbers with us. And I always love hearing people's numbers. I think you can learn a lot uh, about rental properties and kind of figure out the strategy that you want to do by seeing how much money people are actually making. And Praveen Tanasia was open and honest with us, and he shared with us the numbers for his entire portfolio. Yeah, the total rent would be about $270,000. Okay. And do you have mortgages on all the properties? Yes, every property has a mortgage. We okay. uh, purchased them all with between 20 and 30% down. Okay. And so with your mortgage payments, when you add them all up, how much do you pay, it, say for the year again? Like how much? So the, mortgage, you- the mortgage is about 75 or so. Okay. For the year, but the total expenses add up to about one eighty seven. Okay, so so the one eighty seven that's everything: your taxes, your insurance, your mortgage payments. That's correct. Everything else. Okay, so then your net is eighty three thousand. Right after everything. So tell me about your portfolio. What what does your portfolio look like? So we have it broken up into about three different. Uh, I guess I would say rental properties. We have two that are vacation rentals. Uh, in a town close by. And then we have three locally, which are about 15 minutes away from us, which are long, long-term rentals. And then we also have three out-of-state properties in Little Rock. So those are more for cash flow, whereas the local properties we get a little cash flow, but also appreciation as well. So you've got a lot of diversification in there. Was that by design or did that just kind of happen? No, yeah, initially we bought some properties that obviously would appreciate in the local market. And then, yeah, we wanted to diversify and go after some cash flow since our goal was to, you know, be able to live on the cash flow in the future. Today, Praveen's rental income covers about 75% of his rental income. And what I think is great about Praveen is he's just a regular guy that's been buying rental properties. He doesn't have a huge portfolio. He has a handful of rental properties that are all generating really good money. And if you want to hear more from him and how he did what he did, he was on episode number 376. And like I mentioned earlier, if you want to hear any of today's episodes in full, I've got everything on the website. You can find links to everything at rentalincomepodcast.com slash episode 399. I'd like to thank today's sponsor for making today's episode possible. It's Chaley Ridge from Ridge Lending Group. 
Chaley is a nationwide lender, and her specialty is helping investors finance rental properties. She has a ton of different loan programs. She has interest-only programs where you can save money because you have a lower interest payment. She has lines of credit where you can get a first position HELOC on rental properties. Of course, the regular regular 30-year fix, she's got arms. She's got a ton of different programs, and she can find something customized to you for your situation. If you want to find out more or you want to set up a time to talk to Chaley personally, you can track her down at ridgelendinggroup.com. That's R-I-D-G-E lendinggroup.com, NMLS 42056. Thank you so much for checking out the podcast today. I'll be back with a regular interview on Tuesday. My name is Dan Lane, and this has been the Rental Income Podcast.